as you know by now, The Founder is not your ordinary magazine that you find in the market these days. We here at Founder hunt the authentic startup stories that have a unique kick that makes you, even as a viewer, intrigued. And sometimes these are just the tiny ideas that you will never expect to be an idea at all. Today we are bringing you a story that is exactly something like that. This service is known as Wallet Nation. And we have the creator and the founder behind the idea with us to talk about the whole journey. Welcome to the show, Musab Nalir. Hope you're doing wonderful. Doing great, actually. Thank you very much for having me. All right, jumping right into the first question. Uh, what is Volunteer Nation? It's a frequent question that's been asked. What's the uh, overall idea and concept of Volunteer Nation? So Volunteer Nation as a name uh, was founded or was thought of in 2018 uh, when we started off Iron Man. There was an event called Iron Man Colombo. Uh, so when they're for- forming that, this entire thing came. But the concept for, or the idea what Volunteer Nation is now known for uh, was something uh, inspired way back in 2012, I think almost 10 years back. Uh, when I went for this edX forum, uh, I realized there were some graduates who were you know, having honorary passes and they weren't, um, they were pretty much shy to just go forward and have a conversation with the re- respective recruiters, right? And I realized, okay, we, Sri Lanka has 97% literacy rate, but skill, there's a massive gap between skill and uh, knowledge. And one day I'm going to do something about it. And then things started going around. I've been working a lot, unconsciously I've been doing a lot of things, uh, helping out people, having one-to-one conversations, you know. People say it's a mentoring session, but for me it's usually a casual chat. And um, through that, I realized when we formed Volunteer Nation to organize the entire volunteer management part of it for Ironman in 2018 and 19, I thought it's a cool name to have. Yeah. Uh, and then uh, we just put another separate tagline saying empowering the nation one volunteer at a time. Uh, with an idea of you know empowering the youth with the skills, soft skills, and you know getting them the right, uh, what do you call it? skill set that they could either in their personal life or in the corporate life because we believe the youth are the future. I also represent the same uh, uh, age group so I decided okay why not we say that and work towards empowering the youth through skill set, through mentoring to you know getting the bridging the skill gap basically and through events yeah. Okay so how does it work like how do you find uh, people to join these events that you all have? So initially it was mainly going and recruiting uh, or partnering up with different uh, individuals and uh, different clubs like road tracks, certain schools and all the stuff for the Ironman event. That's how it all started in terms of getting for events perspective. But um, afterwards, after Ironman uh, uh, in 2019, I think was the last event after that because of the COVID and so many other issues, I think it was discontinued. Hopefully they'll continue again soon. But with that, we there was a small set of uh, crowd that they were also keeping in touch, saying that if there are events, mm-hmm. we would like to go forward. So it was just that same crowd that was coming. But for other events which we which I partnered up with from Volunteer Nation, um, basically they have a set of volunteers already. Mm-hmm. They would like them to be trained in terms of what the respective areas, or they ask if we can recruit volunteers. Then we go do a separate recruitment hunt and then we train the volunteers. Because uh, when it comes to event, there's two aspects to Volunteer Nation overall, right? When you say Volunteer Nation for, as a service, uh, we take it down for as an event-based company, then it's about volunteer operation management. But my passion and my thought, which started almost in 2012, which I was inspired by, it's about empowering the youth. That is something that uh, for the volunteers, it's completely free of charge. But uh, for the corporate, I, I partner with corporates and uh, luckily I have an um, a institution, foundation actually, Zamzam Foundation, mm-hmm. that we have partnered up with for a year mm-hmm. where we are able to, I got the infrastructure uh, building actually um, to give the training and development completely free of charge for volunteers and for people who are interested. Okay. So things like that. So two different uh, avenues to look at. Uh, what are the obstacles you have faced with this whole project? Okay, a uh, couple of things. Uh, uh, again, breaking it into those two uh, different avenues. The first, with regard to event, when people say it's volunteer, vo- volunteering part of it. Of course, volunteering 
uh, it does not you don't charge for it but when it comes for event when they are organizing event for a monetary perspective mm. it could be a, a a concert it could be a fiesta it could be a, a sport sporting event so for those kind of things of course volunteering will have a certain element where for volunteer management part of it is something that you could charge yeah. but the aspect there it is like you know you should do it for free of charge um, because you are doing it's volunteering but mm-hmm. volunteer management is some something totally different uh, the obstacle within for events would be getting the uh, right cream of volunteers mm-hmm. who would actually drive the event because for each and every uh, event uh, volunteers so i would like it the it's a human touch mm-hmm. right if you have the right human touch the journey for the individual going through that process if it is a uh, carnival at the right from the entrance to the exit of the carnival you will be having people to uh, manage them if it's a event you will uh, if it's a race basically from the registration point of view until the race finishes those aspect of it so getting the volunteers with the right mindset or that mindset could be trained of course but that aspect is a bit of a hassle uh, in terms of the training and development of it um, i don't know why but when i say i'm doing this for free of charge people don't want to sign up okay. when uh, uh, the same thing if there is outside there are people say you know we are going to charge you 5000 bucks for two sessions 10000 bucks for four sessions people sign up for those so i was like okay maybe then i've been getting a lot of uh, requests saying that why if you're doing training and development for this specific segment why not you charge mm-hmm. but that's not the whole purpose of it so yeah those are the small challenges have you ever regretted anything overall in life when it comes to you know the services that you provide regretted uh, no mm-hmm. um, because end of the day the aspect in terms of i call myself the chief volunteer for volunteer nation right so when you are doing anything voluntarily it's a service you don't give a service with expectation uh, you do it with the intention um, of you know doing something better so when it comes to the bigger perspective of it in terms of the empowering the youth and the development of the youth that i see as a complete voluntary service and i don't regret it at all of course uh, certain events uh, where you go in for discussions i won't say it's a regret but that's a small turn off point where people expect you to uh, manage the overall event management for volunteers and they expect it to be foc so those are two different components because when you say you are a volunteer people expect you to be volunteering for everything uh, but that's totally two different segments so no regrets it's just it's a very good learning curve uh, that you've been having Well, what do you think Sri Lanka as a country and Sri Lankan as a generation lack when it comes to this volunteer based work? Very good question. Very interesting question. I never thought of it. Sri Lanka as a country, I won't say lack anything because Sri Lanka overall is known to be a country that is in service. Right? If we uh, over the past couple of years if you look at when covid struck there was even certain articles how sri lanka as a country in elder El specifically how they treated the foreigners who were stuck here and when uh, when we did the iron man we were rated the best uh, uh, i think we were 4% above global average and i when we got the understanding it was given for volunteer the highest uh, marks because we are very compassionate and passionate in terms of whatever we do and service is oh, oh, what do you call this uh, a service mentality is always there uh, we are very compassionate about it but when it comes to uh, uh, certain events uh, i would say sometimes entitlement is there uh, we as humans i won't say as volunteers as humans when we say that okay we'll volunteer for certain events but while when you volunteer of course you you have to basically look after the volunteer requirement their welfare like travel food transportation if you are giving clothing if there's allowance that you are giving all those need to be looked after looked after but apart from that i believe there's a sense of entitlement as a individual some have that they're saying okay i will do this i won't do this but when you are given a task as a volunteer you have to basically be willing to do everything of course Uh, we are very conscious or personally i am very conscious in terms of the role uh, it give, that's given to a volunteer safety of the volunteer is very important i don't tolerate any sort of harassment 
that's been done for for male or female both um, so those kind of things are my priority because their safety is a key concern but i believe that uh, entitlement factor is there which uh, is something that you can't get rid of but i think people will understand going forward all right are you a satisfied soul with what you're doing I would say absolutely every uh, single day it's a great day you are just grateful for having a life and if you are able to impact one soul where they say that you know uh, today i didn't give up because of you i i believe that's there and uh, almost every single day i have that going in me so okay. uh well let me ask you this question who are you without a title yourself i would say mods double Okay. <laughs> I have a twin brother. So his name is Moad. So if I don't have my name, I think people know me by my twin's name. Yeah. Uh but that's a very deep question, you know, if I don't have the title uh Musab or the name Musab, I think it will be just a soul who is very confident. Uh I don't know personally, I'm just I've been telling this across very boldly also. I think I'm a champion and rockstar. So I believe that genuinely. So yeah, maybe a champion and a rockstar. All right. Well, thank you so much for being here today. It's an absolute pleasure, Tashara, and thank you very much for having me here. Grateful to be a part of uh, the Founder Magazine's initial discussions. All right. Well, that's it for today, folks, on the Founder Lifestyle. Well, just like the saying goes, as long as you don't give up, not even the sky is the limit. Well, this is Tashara and me signing off. Have an amazing day.